Hey there. Have you ever had or dealt with someone who has an irrational fear, right? Like everything in your conscious mind knows that everything's okay, that there's really nothing to be afraid of. And yet internally you're having symptoms of panic and anxiety um, that no amount of self-talk or strategy seem to help. Well, that happened to me. Um, on my trip to Kentucky, I just got home last night and I was driving through the mountains. And now I know that that is a scary situation for some people, for a lot of people. Um, but I was really beating myself up over this because I felt like I shouldn't still be struggling with fears and panic. Um, it's been almost, it's been over a year, maybe a year and a half since I've had um, a panic attack, which is something that I was struggling with a couple years ago. And driving through Tennessee on 75, I was really, really struggling. I'm talking like gripping the wheel. I, Melody, am perfectly safe and secure in the physical world. I, Melody, am perfectly safe and secure in the physical world. And my hands were, you know, tight and wrinkled and in pain. And I was breathing, breathing and holding on for dear life, really. And every time I would like let my eyes veer to, you know, try and enjoy the beauty of the mountains, I felt like my whole bottom totally dropped out. It was very, very hard. Um, and I had my daughter in the car with me. And so I'm trying to really model um, good strategies and make sure she doesn't feel afraid. It was just a really tough moment. Um, and as soon as I got to Kentucky out of, you know, out of the Tennessee trip, I put my feet in the grass at the Kentucky Welcome Center and took some deep breaths and got recentered and, and all of that stuff. And then I, yeah, I was really hard on myself for a little while. I didn't understand, like I thought I had dealt with all of these fears and what's going on. And then yesterday morning we were coming back and I was like, I can't go through that again on the ride home. So I'm going to sit, I'm going to get quiet and I'm going to find what's going on. And I just felt like it had to be generational or inherited stuff that had been sort of lingering. So in my time of prayer and testing, I asked the question, is there generational energy related to my feelings of panic and driving through the mountains? And I got a yes response and found that there was the energy of a physical trauma 11 generations back on my father's side. So I cleared that physical trauma energy and then continued asking, is there an inherited emotion related to my fear of driving through the mountains? And I found panic and horror also from 11 generations back on my dad's side. Um, and a couple other things, all inherited emotions. And so it really struck me at how powerful this type of healing is to allow us to ask the right questions to go in and heal and so i was thankful i believed i released the trapped emotions you know and i sent love and forgiveness um, all of all of the tools that i know how to use and i have to tell you that i enjoyed my drive home yesterday i didn't feel fearful i was able to actually you know look carefully around at my at the scenery around me um, and I couldn't wait to get back and share how I wasn't afraid anymore. Um, and so for some people, the idea of releasing trapped emotions and inherited energy and generational stuff is new. Um, or maybe you understand it, but you just haven't had the tools to know how to release yourself. So if there are these irrational fears or issues of panic that are bothering you, plaguing you, felt like plaguing me, weighing heavily on you. And you know, your conscious psychological tools are not working. You may need to apply some spiritual principles. And that's another thing that I've learned. You know, we've got physical laws, psychological laws, and spiritual laws. And just like you can't, you know, jump off your roof and not expect a physical law to come into play, right? You can't use a psychological tool to solve a physical problem, right? If your leg is broken, can't look at it and think happy thoughts and hope that it's going to be fixed, you've got physical laws, right? So if we're trying to tackle spiritual problems with psychological tools, they're not going to be effective. 
So they all work together. We have to treat mind, body, spirit, um, but sometimes it can be hard to understand. So I just wanted to share a personal testimony, if you will, of how using Emotion Code helped me overcome my severe panic of driving through the mountains.